So our next panelist is uh, Gerard McIntyre. He is directing attorney at National Senior Citizen Law Center. Thank you. I'm glad to see that there is such interest in, in dealing with language access. And I want to thank the Korean Resource Center for the invitation to come here. Now, I'm with the National Senior Citizens Law Center, which is a, an advocacy group on behalf of, of older people uh, in America. And uh, actually, our office is right down the street, so I'm certainly aware of the need for Korean interpreters. Um, I'm going to talk to you about uh, 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 services provided by the Social Security Administration. I don't work for the Social Security Administration, but I deal with Social Security issues. So, and they have basically two programs, Social, Secu Social Security uh, and the insurance program, as well as the SSI program. And I'm sure that most of the people in, in the room are familiar with those programs. Now, in dealing with Social Security, the law is different. Uh, it's not the same as it is if for dealing with county or state agencies. As, as uh, Michael Leos was just mentioning, you have enforceable rights uh, with respect to state and, and federal agencies. Um, the, it's different with respect to Social Security. Um, I, Michael Leos mentioned that there's an executive order that was issued back in 2000 by President Clinton. And that basically says, yes, that they have to have a plan, but it also, the final, you know, and it all sounds very nice when you read it, but then you get to the very end and it says that uh, this doesn't create any new, uh, new enforceable rights. And title, since Title VI doesn't apply, basically um, there is no right, no, no legal right to interpretive services or written notices in dealing with the Social Security Administration. So I want to just make that clear. Now, what, hap what, is, what goes on at Social Security? I mean, some of you probably, uh, probably are familiar with what goes on. Um, but let me just tell you what the, how, what, how it is, is, is set up at Social Security. At Social Security, there is a very good, sort of, this is a mix of sort of the good, bad, and ugly. Um, the good part is that Social Security has an interpreter policy which is really uh, probably the best in the nation. It provides that uh, anybody in their dealings with the Social Security Administration is, no matter what language they speak, is entitled to an interpreter in their dealings with Social Security. Uh, unlike Title VI, where you know, there has to be a certain threshold level, so that Korean, for instance, you would have a right to an interpreter, uh, in the case of uh, dealing with the Social Security Administration, for instance, if you speak, you know, Mongolian or some other language which is not found in such great quantity here, they still have to provide you with an interpreter. So that's, that's the good news. And this is really important, by the way, in dealing with Social Security because what a lot of people don't realize is the SSI program has more uh, limited English speakers among the S in the SSI program than any other benefit program in the nation. Nationwide, older, or a greater percentage, I should say, I don't know about the total numbers, the nationwide, over one-third of the people, of, of older people who apply for SSI benefits, prefer to speak a language other than English, all right? And Korean is one of the, one of the major languages that they deal with. So, uh, they, they do have to provide the interpreter service, but in practice, we know that what happens very frequently um, is that pe people don't get an interpreter when they need one. Um, and it, it varies from office to office, so that I'm sure that people here in this room have had different experiences in dealing with Social Security. Some offices, I think, are pretty good, um, but such as one in Glendale. Uh, others are really poor. So, uh, but you have a right to insist on it, and you really should, particularly if you're dealing with something important, because you can't afford to have a misunderstanding uh, and, and somebody writes down that you said X when you really said Y. Um, now, when it comes to written notices, um, 
here, the Social Security Administration does nothing. They provide some notices in Spanish, but even that is incomplete um, and sometimes not really uh, targeted towards Spanish speakers. They provide no notices in any other language. Um, they, the last I uh, heard from people at Social Security, they had a long-range plan, and, and this, this is and very vague, for in providing notices in one other language, in Chinese, um, perhaps in 10 years. So um, I don't know what that means in terms of Korean. Um, I, I don't see any children here, but if I saw one, maybe I would say that when that, uh, when that child retires. But uh, this is something, though, that while there is no legal right to get a notice in your own language, um, it, it is not something that we should just forget about. So it is something, for instance, that I think that you should speak to, uh, you know, contact your uh, representatives in Congress, your senators, Senator Feinstein, Senator Boxer, and whoever your um, local uh, representative is in, in Congress, uh, plus probably uh, Representative Becerra, who is uh, on the committee that has jurisdiction. So uh, that would be my, my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for your clear and detailed explanation.